I'm Zach Tawatari. He's the creator of Grills and built a jewelry empire. But this Houston icon's American dream started in Vietnam. We share with you the inspiring story, this one-on-one -on -one with the one and only Johnny Dang. Johnny Dang, known, yes, as, <laughs> known as a jeweler to the stars, the king of bling, yeah. but this whole story started many years ago with much more humble beginnings, isn't that right? Right, right. Definitely, yeah. Tell me about growing up in Vietnam. What was that like? Man, uh, I rem of course I remember for life uh, how I grew up in Vietnam. In Vietnam, I was born in 1973. Vietnam was finished 1975. Mm -hmm. So two years I, I was two years old. By the time from 1975 to 85, by that time I grew up with like no power, no electricity, no waters in the hood, like a mud, for real. So um, it's, it's fun, but that's the time that I remember forever, you know. No yeah. electricity in Vietnam? Yeah, by that time, like, no electricity at all. So the whole my childhood, whenever, you know, we just, we just grow with the sun, no power, of course. So whenever it's dark, the whole village is super dark. And uh, of course, the water, we have to use the well, the water on the, the river. And a few years later, maybe about 80, 80, 81, so we can be able to get the well, you know. But by that time, we use the river waters most of the time. So times were tough back then. It's real, real tough. Yeah, only, not only for my families, for all Vietnamese, you know, for my whole village, especially because I'm from the south of Vietnam, the very small village. They call Ban Me Thuc, like that, like, like real small. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Crazy. That's, Crazy. that's mm -hmm. incredible. And yeah. I mean, people would be, I think, shocked to hear that, knowing where you are today. But this story, the only the reason you were able to come to the U.S. starts with your dad. Isn't that right? Right, right. With my, my families. So your dad came over here on a boat in what year and what was that journey like for him? Uh, it's, it's well very tough for my dad. My dad, uh, he was a soldier of uh, South Vietnam. So after the war, they put him in prison. Mm -hmm. So uh, as I know, when he was in prison without a release date. Of course, even my, my mom did not know when my dad could be able to release, you know. And he escaped the prison and uh, go to the, the U.S. by the boat. But it was tough because he told me story just like my oldest brothers. He did the same. And because they got a small boat and with so many people. So the second day, they ran out of food on the second day. And the engine, the, 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 the engine dead, no oil, no oil, or gas, whatever they use. So they just flow it. They just flow on the ocean for like two weeks. So luckily, they got uh, rescued by one of the, the big ship, you know. And uh, that's how they, he's. He told me very clear story that most of the people on the boat almost died because they, they didn't have food in, in two weeks. So it's tough, you know what I'm saying? So they cost a They survived by catching fish in the ocean, you know, and then just lay down at nighttime, wait for the, <laughs> the rain. It's crazy stories that. So, um, the stories of me living in Vietnam in tough condition is really not, nothing to compare with how my dad, my uncle, my, uh, my oldest brothers escaped it. Wow. You know, to, to come here. Wow. Yeah. Now, I know that your father was in the jewelry 
repair business, right? Or right. he was in the jewelry business. Right. Tell me a little bit about how he came into that and then how you came into the jewelry business. We have a little bit family background in jewelry because before 1975, my father's family was in jewelry business. So when he came here, he, he didn't know how to make jewelry, but he got an idea. So he opened a jewelry, small jewelry shop in flea market. And, uh, and we, back then, when he came to Vietnam, visit us, you know, about 85, 90. So they, he just let us know, like, hey, if you have a time, go learn how to make jewelry because I might be able to make jewelry in America, you know? So I learned how to make jewelry in Vietnam, but in, in Asian style, Vietnamese style, mm -hmm. it nothing compared with how we make jewelry in Americans. And uh, he could not do well, and he closed it down a few years after he opened, you know? And that was in Vietnam, but then when he came to Houston, right, he right. opened a shop. No, he opened a shop here. Okay. And uh, he just, he couldn't do well. Okay. I think he's closed now. I don't, I didn't, he didn't tell me what years, but when we came here, he uh, didn't have a store no more. So mm -hmm. what made you decide that you would be able to do it? It's just like the first day I came, it's, uh, it was also tough because we was in Vietnam, we think it, oh, American dream, right? Of course, it's American dream, everything crazy, real good out here. So my first thing, thing to came is like, we have uh, three families, 15 people stay in one house in America. Here in Houston? <laughs> in Houston. Where was that in Houston? Right here on, Pel on Bel Air and Pell Park. It's real five minutes from here now. So it's, it's kind of tough. But we are so happy to gather together. And then the second day, my cousin have a store in flea market. So I say, hey, if you feel boring, let's go. Help me to just go fun, have fun with me because he's on the way to work. I say, hell yeah, let me go help you because I learned how to make jewelry in Vietnam. That's, that's how I started. So I went with him and uh, I, st I st stayed with him for six months. He gave me $500. I was so happy because that's my first $500 I ever made in my life when I was 23. You know, in Vietnam, it's, I can verse the Vietnamese dong. It's a big amount of money. Because when I was in Vietnam, if I went to learn how to make jewelry, I had to pay the jewelers. Mm -hmm. So in here, I went to learn how to make jewelry, and I got money. <laughs> and then, plus, he paid me for lunch and you know, and food when I went to learn it. So a big deal to me. I was so happy for that first. And after that, I know how to make it. And he started giving me my salary, you know. Wow. And then we started with like $35 a day. It's, it's cool. So 23 when you made your first $500. My first $500. And that's also when you came over to the U.S. You were 23 or 22 somewhere? 23. Okay. Yeah, I came here uh, August 96. Okay. So it was like 23. And how long after that before you opened your own shop in the flea market? I got a luck, you know, honestly, just uh, two years after, actually one and a half years after, and uh, I don't remember exactly the date. But when he got two shops in the two, two different flea markets, one they called King Flea Market, one in Cole, and then he couldn't handle two shops at the same time. So he told me, hey, if you want it, I can sell to you the second shop, about 25000 He talked about a jewelry shop, but it's like one showcase, the bar mm -hmm. in the back, just like uh, the jewelry repair place. The reason he sold to me because um, they limit the jewelry repair shop in flea market. Okay. I couldn't open my own. But I, I didn't have money, so I said, okay, you pay me later, 25000 but he paid me monthly. So I said, oh, okay, cool. I did that, and then I moved to the flea market, and then started to repair. But, you know, I do real, I'm, I'm, I love to do the jewelry. So when I do repair, I kind of like people, let's say, they just 
want to solder the necklace, put two necklaces together, like a broken necklace, I solder, I clean the necklace like brand new. I love to do that. And charge like five dollar. Oh man, I'm so I make it so good. The line like every day busy. And then then I asked my mom, my father came and helped me. Because original I repair myself and get the customer. But now I'm so busy sit down repair. So my father, my mom is happy to take order and I repair. Wow. And then the weekend my brothers Kevin Dang and Jimmy uh -huh. on the weekend because that, that time they they work at the groceries and then they went to Texas A and M. They studied college there. So Saturday, Sunday they came back home and they had me. They jeweler too. Wow. Yeah, my, my, my brother's good jewelers. So where was that flea market you started out they with called, originally? They called coal flea markets in the 45. Still exists? Close, yeah, close to the, I think I never checked in there close to the airport. They, I think they still there, a big flea market. Wow, wow. It's very crowded. So then you ended up meeting Paul in what year? Do you remember uh, what year it was? Let me see. Now, about 2000, 2002. Okay. Because when I work in flea market, I have so much repair. Uh -huh. But flea market open from Friday to Sunday, uh -huh. Thursday, Friday, yeah, Friday to Sunday. So from Monday to Thursdays, I have a, I bring the job home and set up in the garage to do repair. You know, because so to get repair, to do extra work. So the weekend, I can, uh, because a lot of job I couldn't repair in there. And since I opened in the garage, I got the idea, instead of working in the garage, why don't we, I find some spot. That's what made me happen to open 500 square feet shop in Shoptown, wow. right at the corner. That's where I met Paul. You what know? do you remember from the first time you met Paul? It's very cool and nice. I don't remember real well how we could connect, but, but I, I remember that Paul was a DJ. He wasn't a rapper yet. He was a DJ in the club, and he wanted to get some order done. And uh, back then, so I say, okay, good connect together, and then we can, uh, he, he say he's he a DJ, he can help me to promote in the club. Because, so when I was in Shoptown, I went out to promote in the club a lot, like pass out a flyer. Mm -hmm. So I say that's a good idea. Since Paul is, was at a DJ in the club, he could help me to promote. I say, okay, so I can, you know, show you how to do the mold for the grill. We can work together. And, and the second best thing is um, somehow I communicate with Paul well, but I could not speak English well to the customer. So Paul kind of translation, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Especially with rappers, you know. When Paul be so popular in rapper, he was on the tour. Sure. I went with him. He connect me with like Kanye West, Diddy, and uh, T.I. or David Banner, all the rapper. But he kind of like translation with me between me and them. I could not speak that well, you know. Sure, That's sure. That's crazy. And, so, and then we have a real web relationship. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and how did you even think of grills in the first place? Had they been done at all? Did you have any inspiration from anything? Not really. It's kind of, um, during my career, I create a couple of very good things. Like when I was in flea market, I created a name play for, for the customer. Like mm -hmm. a lot of Spanish customers, they, they, they wear a lot of name plays. So mm -hmm. I'm real popular, like do on name plays. Mm -hmm. So when I went to Shoptown, I did the diamond for the uh, dentist. The dentist, they do the gold crown. Uh -huh. And then they just saw this, most of the crew been in outside for, in the world for so many years, hundreds of thousands of years. People used to do the gold crown. Sure. So the one day, the dentist, they, got, they make the customer crown. So she wanted me to put the one diamond on the top of it <laughs> for the customer. So that's how I started. I say, wow, that's good. But the reason one diamond, because it costs expensive for the grill and one diamond. So I was thinking why I didn't, uh, why should I do the crowd and the diamond together? You know, it's much cheaper for the customers. So since from one diamond, I create a different kind of set during the work. 
so so since I I live for Paul, but the dentist they do permanent, mm -hmm. you know. So I I'm thinking like not a lot of people want to do permanent like me. I got different grill. I don't want to do permanent grill in there. So I'm just come out with the idea to take in and out the grill. That's called pull out. So since I do pull out, I can do more than one like six top, six bottom, a top, a bottom. You know. So that's how I started. So from then, I would a, instead of one diamond, I would a whole two with a diamond. That make it popular. Wow. And wow. then from, I create like Jenner set, Prong set, kind of create all kind of setting of the diamond to make the diamond look real nice. So when I introduce with the wrappers, so they look so bling on the stage, that, that make it so popular. Wow, and and would you say that when Paul came out with that song, when he came out with Grills, was that when your career really took off? Um, yes, I'm saying that most that we did very well right before that already, mm -hmm. because the moment already popular, nearly really kept the right time, right the moment Grills start booming. But of course, when Nelly and Paul came out with a real song, I make about like 450 grill a day. <laughs> That's crazy. We work like 20 hour, 22 hour, 18 hour minimum a day. They, because they blow up so fast, I could not have enough uh, you know, employees. And uh, originally I got 500 uh, square feet space. And then I ran the spot right next to the shop tile about 2,000 square feet space to do manufacturers. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And then when the grill blown up, I had to rent bigger space. Be fast. And tell me about some of those names that you got orders from when grills just became so popular. Uh, David Banner, of course, Kanye West. When I did the grill, for, he, even he wear the grill until now, I did not, in, I did not know who Kanye West was, you know? Paul say, okay, I have a rapper, Kanye West, he, got a, he was in the studio tonight, he wanted to get a grill. So that's, that's most of the time. And um, Paul said, okay, good, well, let's go make his more and make a grill. So when I met him, I, I really didn't know who Kanye was. Like, I just know the rappers. Him and uh, David Banner, um, Juicy J, because back then the Juicy Mafias, mm -hmm. Little Johns. Little John have a grill until now. I'm doing another one for him now. For so many years, he got so many different grill. And P. Daddy, those the the name that I I met beginners. You know. Wow. Yeah. And now, you have become a jewelry mogul. I guess you could say. Um, what when you think back to that kid growing up in Vietnam? Could you have ever imagined that you would make it like this someday? We heard a lot of, about American dream. You know, every time in Vietnam we heard about American dream, but we couldn't imagine how I could be from, you know, very poor kid in college in, in Vietnam and become a popular jeweler in America. It's really a really dream come true, you know what I'm saying? It's really, I'm so happy that uh, not only me, honestly, in Asian or Vietnamese community, we are very blessed to be here in America, and uh, a lot of families are very successful here mm -hmm. because we have an opportunity to work. You know, it's a lot of my friends in Vietnam, they, they, it's not that lazy. They're much more talented than me. They must work harder than me, but it's just like no opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, in Americans, we have like, like, I can say like open door opportunity. You get like no limited. That's why not only me, a lot, I'm, I'm so proud of a lot of Vietnamese in my community. A lot of my friends in here, they are very success. They like big time lawyer, a lot of male, a lot of my friends, they like super do very well in business in the nail shop. They got, some of them got like 40 store, 50 store. I know one guy, we hang out together, had like 100 store nail, 100 nail shop, you know? 
So I said, man, you cannot be able to do that in Vietnam or somewhere else. So this is really American, you know, American dream. Yeah.